If you're wondering how to upgrade your .NET 8 or 9 .NET projects or a whole solution with lots of projects in there to .NET 10, you've come to the right place. Just keep watching here because what you can see now is a project from the Blazor Clean Architecture course of the .NET Web Academy, currently running a big, big .NET 10 celebration sale. So maybe you want to check it out, link in the video description below. But what you can see here now is a clean architecture, right? We got a couple of projects here. We got the application layer, domain, infrastructure, web UI client and web UI server, meaning we have a .NET backend with entity framework, SQL server and all that stuff, identity for your login system and Blazor as the front end with using Blazor server and also Blazor web assembly. Now, the simplest way really to upgrade is first download the .NET 10 SDK and then also download Visual Studio 2026. In my case, if you're using Visual Studio Code or JetBrains Rider, you do you, right? This is also great, great IDEs. It should work. But for me, in my case, I needed the .NET 10 SDK, SDK together with the final release of Visual Studio 2026, the community edition. And then when you check out the projects here, actually, we can open them. So you see lots of CQRS stuff and more. But you see that the target framework here is set to .NET 9. Now, the very first step after getting the SDK and the IDE version that you need is simply changing this manually, the target framework everywhere in your application layer, in your domain layer, and so on. So we switch everything to .NET 10, like that. And then also here, all right, so this is done. And now Visual Studio already tells us that something is maybe not that good with our NuGet packages. And there's actually even more. So something broke in the code. If you are using a Blazor application from .NET 8 or 9. So pay attention here and keep watching. But this is just the target framework, all right? So we can see in our git changes that uh, we only changed this, the project files so far. Now, the easiest way regarding the NuGet packages is again going to the Solution Explorer and then for the whole solution, we manage the NuGet packages, right? So just go there and if Visual Studio wants to, yep, it will open the NuGet tab. And as you can see, I'm already at the Updates tab because now it takes some time and it will tell me, okay, something is here that can be updated. And in the installed ones, it tells me there are some vulnerabilities. Well, again, the easiest way is to simply select all packages. In my case, it's Carter in this solution, then also Scalar for the UI tests. And well, a couple of Microsoft packages. And as you can see here, the versions now are mostly 10.0.0. And for the, let's say, internal stuff, we got 4.14 and so on. And maybe Carter, no, Carter is also 10, but Scala is something different. One more hint, I have not checked include pre-release, right? In your case, this might be different. So you have to play around with that. But I'd say we just update the packages here now to .NET 10 or the 10 version, mostly accept everything. And that should be it. Right, well, let's test that. We restart the application. There it is, it is loading. So this is a little blog application here in this example, right? We are already logged in actually. But here, this should actually change. It should not load articles until the sun explodes. It should actually show me the articles pretty quickly. So something is off here. Now, when I have a look here at the developer console, I see this thing, failed to load resource, Blazor Web JS. What? It's not loading the JS file. What, what is going on there? There got to be an error in the terminal, right? No, I don't see any error here. But when we scroll to the top, we see this little warning. It says mapped static asset endpoints not found. And sure, mapped static assets is called before add interactive web assembly render mode. All right, now check out the, or let's check out the program CS here now in our server project. And indeed we are calling something similar. Use static files is our method of choice. 
And this was the state since .NET 8 actually. But now some things are different. When I, for instance, create a brand new Blazor app with .NET 10 and Visual Studio 2026, we see this method here, map static assets, all right? Now, what's the difference? Well, I tell you what the difference is. When we check out the official documentation, we see the following static asset delivery in server side Blazor apps. And here it says, actually since .NET 9, but there it still worked when you just use use static files here, because use static files says serve static assets to client without the optimizations of map static assets. And map static assets optimizes the delivery of static assets to client. Okay, I think maybe we don't want the optimizations or we don't need them, but this is not true. It says here map static assets can replace use static files in most situations. However, map static assets is optimized for serving the assets from known locations in the app. For instance, the Blazor Web JS at build and publish time. If the app serves assets from other locations, such as disk or embedded resources, use static files should be used. So in the end, this means could be the case that you still need both. Now in my project here, I just need one and that is the map static assets. So let's go back. There we are. And let's just uncomment this thing here and then say app map static, there it is, assets, right? And again, here the tooltip says maps static files produced during the build as endpoints. All right, and now let's rebuild the application. And there are our articles, right? Now everything loads as it should. So now everything is great again. So pay attention when you're updating. First, of course, the SDK, then target framework, in every project, then the NuGet packages, and then just see if there are any breaking changes. In a Blazor server app in particular, you have to change the delivery of the static files. In your case, this might be different. And if you want to build a .NET 10 app from scratch, I recommend watching this video here, where we go through building a web API with EF Core step by step.